This is exit planning when he knocks at your door. So usually when your ex or soon to be ex begins to knock at your door, it is usually because he's tired of being homeless. But just because he's tired of being homeless does not necessarily mean that he's tired enough for change. That people will knock at your door to get you to open, but that's only because they don't want to experience the immediate consequence. And then that's telling because if they, if here it is, they know that they have hurt you, but they don't stay uh, away f for you to heal. So then here it is, the person is at your door trying to get back in, but they haven't really learned anything. The person hasn't really learned anything. And so um, every time you take somebody back before the time, before they can self-reflect and before they can learn from their mistakes and really admit that they actually made a mistake, uh, if you take them back before the time, you will always get someone basically half-baked. And as long as you are taking the person back, why would they need to change? So he's not tired enough for change, um, but he doesn't want to be homeless at the same time. He still has abuse inside. He's not tired enough to let it go. Uh, wherever the abuse is, it just depends. If he projected abuse onto you, uh, whether it was emotional, mental, psychological, financial, um, and of course, physical, if he projected any type of abuse on you, it's still inside of him. And you taking him back and opening up the door is not going to solve the abuse that is on, on the inside of him, meaning that he's not tired enough to let go what is hurting on the inside of him. So it, it is much easier to continue to project his abuse, what's going on inside of him, onto you, make you the punching bag, make you the responsibility uh, bearer of his burdens whatever he has experienced in his past he never addressed so now that he is in relationship with you and knocking at your door you are basically saying that i'm going to continue to let that abuse come inside because remember you is your door you hold the key to the door you hold the lock to the door you have the you hold the prerogative to the door you hold the cards you hold the power to the door you don't have to let the person in but if you let the person in when he knocks at your door you are essentially letting back in that abuse that he projected onto you because it'll go good for maybe like a few days and then he's going to return back to his folly because abusing you soothes him and he hasn't learned how to deal with his emotional uh, issues. He doesn't know how to regulate his emotions when he gets angry and upset. All he understands is hit. That is his love language. But, it's, but if it's not your love language, then don't open the door. He still has pout inside, so he's not tired enough to begin managing his own emotions. So he's no different than a little child. Uh, who falls out on the floor, pouts and cries, wants his way. And so here it is, you kicked him out at, at hour 8 o'clock p.m. and he's back at 10 p.m. Because he, he, he understands the patterns that you have laid out and you perpetuate and maintain. And so he knows that he can go off somewhere and come right back and you'll let him back inside. But all of that is, it just amounts to him pouting and never um, growing up. And it's likely that he pouted when he was a child, that he fell all out on the floor and then his mama went to pick him up. And I've never been the kind of person who liked to pick up a pouting child. There are children that you need to pick up if they have fallen and hurt themselves and you need to to comfort them. But then there are children who are really trying to manipulate you through a pout. And if you go to pick that person up, pick that child up under the guise of comfort, 
it's not going to be comforting if he turns around and does exactly the same thing again. That's why I think cheating is basically pouting. The man or the woman who cheats on their romantic partner is essentially pouting about something that he or she cannot get from the partner or the partner is refusing to give their other partner whatever it is the person wants. And so uh, the cheating is a way to uh, to get the uh, partner's attention, but all it does is makes the um, relationship more toxic. He still has run in him, so he's not tired enough to stop. So again, he will come back. You let him in, but he'll run again and go and cheat somewhere and go and uh, call an ex or go and meet somebody new or be... Uh, be online trying to meet new people have people you know sending him messages and and you know calling and things like that he's running he's running from the current relationship but he won't leave the current relationship that he has with you because i'm like this i've always been the kind of person if i didn't want you i wouldn't use i wouldn't call you to use you because i don't think that's fair once i made a decision to leave you alone or you left me alone then I'm not going to continue to mess with you, mess with your heart, mess with your mind, uh, ask you for anything. And if I do ask you for something, it is really, truly an emergency. Other than that, I don't want to give you the hope of uh, coming back and we getting back together and making things right. And that's what that basically means. He's He, he still has running him. He's giving off the, um, the view or the idea that he's ready. That's why, um, you know, he's knocking on the door. That's why I, I had asked my ex, um, you know, if he is still messing around with his ex. And, uh, and then he responded, well, I'm with you, aren't I? And at first I thought about that question and I thought it meant something, but then he turned around and did exactly the same thing over and over again. And I said to myself, oh, that's his way of not really answering the question, not really addressing it. He's physically here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's mentally here. So he still has run in him. He's not tired enough to stop. He still has anxiety in him. He's not tired enough to settle down. People who perpetually uh, uh, cheat and adopt a lifestyle of cheating are in perpetual anxiety. They live their life through anxiety. So they situate their lives um, um, around that anxiety. It's like they it's like they create a whole moat around the anxiety because why why what is it in you that is making you so anxious that you have to go out and cheat and lie and be deceptive? Uh, if you just don't want that partner, and I always think that cheating means exit. So that means if you're cheating, that means you want out. Okay, then just leave. But people don't want to leave because they want the benefits of being in a relationship, but they don't want to be in the relationship. They want wifely duties, uh, sex and companionship and finances and a good meal and good clean home and things like that. But they're not going to marry you in their hearts. They're not ready to settle down. You know, you have a lot of men who uh, think like they just want to have sex with at least every woman in the world, you know, just once. As if um, if they don't do that, their lives won't be fulfilled, okay? Well, all that's really going to do, you, you having sex with hundreds of women is just going to wear your body down. And when you need your body, and there's going to come a time when you're going to need your body, you're going to need the energy and the stamina beyond the bedroom to carry out a particular purpose you're interested in. You know, it's funny how we waste all those 20s and 30s playing around and doing stupid stuff. And then in the 40s is when we begin to feel our mortality. And then when we feel when we feel our mortality, we, we think, OK, I'm not ready to go just yet. I got a lot to do. Because then we begin to reflect on the wasted time that we, um, you know, engaged in and created and perpetuated. And we can't get that time back. So 
uh, not ready. Sometimes people think settling down is a bad thing. No, settling down means being stable. That you shouldn't have to have um, have to need to uh, stay on somebody's couch. You should have your own place as an adult. There are times when you may have down times due to a recession and, and because we are in a pandemic, due to a pandemic, some kind of global crisis or something like that. I'm not talking about those times. I'm talking about just on an everyday, regular, keeping a place, paying your bills, going to work every day or doing whatever hustle that you have, but consistently. People don't want to do that. They want to live for the day. And I've always said that people who want to live for the day are always the ones who need to come live with you when they get older. And if they would have just taken two decades out of their life and built up something, a retirement, a, a thrift savings plan, some kind of record of job success or something like that, that when they get to their 50s and 60s, they have something they you know, say to buy a house or, or, um, you know, a car or, or something like that. Everything doesn't always have to be a mansion. Just having a, a suitable home uh, and having a stable mind is actually much more important. He still has wonder in him, so he's not tired enough to make a choice. That's what that basically means. When people keep, when people keep you at arm's length, at both arms, is there indecisiveness that keeps you on the hook that they can't make a decision about you so they just don't make a decision at all but indecision is still a a decision and so they would rather wander around the mountain wander in the wilderness wander without any vision wander without any insight wisdom or anything they would rather wander because then wandering um, doesn't afford you um, any responsibility. You don't have to be responsible if you are wandering. All you have is yourself. But then you make other people wanderers too because they keep wondering whether you're going to choose them or not, right? So they he's not tired enough to make a choice. And a lot of times people don't get tired enough to make a choice until they are forced to make a choice. And so, and that could be while they are on their sick bed, they can be in divorce court, they could have um, an accident, they could lose their job. There are times, there are times that you need to be an adult and make a choice, make a decision. And then there are times that if you let stuff go on too long, a decision will be made on your behalf. That's why it's important that you set proper goals. You make sure that you choose you and um, make sure that uh, you get what you need because if you don't plan your day, somebody is or will plan your day for you. He still has doors in him. He's not tired enough to close them. So these are the types of people who like all of these, you know, dating rotations. They keep... They keep in contact with their exes, right? They have all these, all these, you know, different doors that they refuse to close. And in my relationship readiness series, um, and exit planning is part of that series that you need to close out relationships before you engage the one that you really want to be in. You should not have one step in your relationship and one step out of it. And I don't know if that's just a fear. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it is a fear, but I also think it's ego. You know, I think that you think um, it's okay for me to do this. You know, I have the power to do this. I get to tell these these women or whatever when I'm ready to be with them. And if they don't like it, I got somebody else. Uh, some of those doors can be dangerous. Eventually, you're going to get a door that could be life-threatening. You're going to get a door that, that the person is a snake and you thought that person was uh, uh, real and it could be, that person could be the death of you. How many times have we seen uh, um, Lifetime movies and Snap movies and, you know, Fatal Attraction movies that they were, the individual was going down one road and then she met a guy 
down a whole completely different road. And for a time, it 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 went just fine. But then at a but later on in the relationship, there were some issues, some cheating issues, some ex issues, a mistress issue, or whatever. And then the lady ended ended up dead. There, you have to be careful about the doors that you keep open because. If you have struggle doors, something, I don't know what those doors could be for you, alcohol, uh, drugs, or something like that, or sex addiction, um, addiction, eventually those doors are going to completely reveal themselves and, and swoop you in and close them behind you and lock. And it may take you forever to get out of there. It may take your death. So he still has doors in him. That's why you shouldn't open up your door because then you are opening up your opening up to the doors that are inside of him and that he's refusing to close. He still has choices in him, so he's not tired enough to choose stability, which is really the bulk of this whole uh, lecture that um, adults choose stability. Children choose options and, and instability and pouting and lack of emotional regulation and wandering because they are still developing. So it, it makes sense that they will like a, a friend one day and not like a friend um, you know, the next day. Want to go to school, not go to school. Go back and forth in their choices because they are still developing. As an adult, however, you should know enough in, in your adult living, how to make a choice and how important it is to make choices and not continue to engage in wondering. That stability is more important than anything that you, that any other choice you think you need to, uh, to make in terms of choosing another mate, cheating on your mate, lying to your mate, um, you know, divorcing your mate to be with somebody else. Hopefully you were able to gain some insight from this lecture. Uh, please like and subscribe. You can visit my website as well as send me an email. Any references to the book will be available spring 2021 on Amazon. Thank you for visiting the channel.